In this lesson, we're going to focus on the movement of the elements. So in the previous lesson, we were able to position all of our elements. They're all ready to go, but of course, they're not moving. So we need to add in some movement of those elements. And we already have a placeholder for that as well, ready to go. So we've got this one here where we're playing the game. And instead of this comment, we'll create a function that will move the enemy. And let's go up and let's uh, set up that movement over here. So function move enemy. And then within this function, the first thing that we want to do is we want to grab all of the temporary enemies. So grab them all within an array using the document object and query selector all because we want to grab all of them. And the way that we identify them, we've given them all the same class so we can grab them. So basically what's going to happen here is that when we run this, we're going to use query selector all, and we're going to grab all of the elements within the page that have a class of baddie, and we're going to put them within an array. And then we can loop through that array and setting up the enemy of temp enemy and this will loop through all of those elements and now we can apply some movement to those so let's uh, grab some values so console and let's uh, grab let's grab let's do a console log and we'll see what information is contained within enemy so we're probably going to have quite a few of them here and they're not going to be moving as of yet so we see we've got all of this information that's being rendered out and there is just a ton of stuff being rendered out there. So we've got our body, we've got our left position, our top position. So we're ready to take those values, just as we did with the shots as we were moving those around, we can move the bad guys around as well. So let's uh, set the enemy position and style. So we're gonna do the vertical position first so grabbing that enemy and we've got because we're just grabbing that element so we'll do offset top and then we're going to add in the enemy and remember when we were creating the enemies we created an x move and a y move value and then we had set those within the x mover and y mover values so that will give us a little bit uh, more of a randomness to the movement so let's add that one in. And then lastly, make sure that we add in the picks in order to be able to properly render out that style property. Next, we'll do from the left. And in this case, we're getting enemy, and this is offset left, because we're using the horizontal position. And we've also got a value that we've created here as well. So mover x. And then the same thing, we're gonna add the picks to that one and save it. So let's try that out and see what happens. So we go to start. So there they are, they're moving around and that's actually exactly what we want it to happen. So I'll, moving, some of them are moving rather slowly. So that's something that we do need to definitely tweak and update. Uh, so we've got a few that are moving slowly. So we gotta make sure that at least they're moving a little bit faster. So let's make a quick update to this value and we'll set this one to five and try that again. So now we've got them moving a little bit faster. And of course you can adjust this as needed. So the director, uh, the set direction one is the one that you can adjust and that will adjust the actual speed that they're traveling in. Because remember, this is the one that we use to take away from the value that we're setting up. So whether it's horizontal or vertical, and this is the one that we can position it. And you notice something that the enemies, they ran off the screen. So just as our shots did earlier, we need to add something in, in order to account for that. So let's do a condition here. And if the condition is not true, then we can update those values. And this condition, so this one is, could be fairly long. We'll grab our enemy and we need that offset top position. So we gotta make sure that it's not greater than 550. 
and use the pipes for or. So enemy offset top is not less than zero. And then we need to do the horizontal as well. So enemy offset left position is not greater than 750 or enemy. And you can also set up these as dynamic positions as well if you need to, if you've got a dynamically adjusting height and width. So now, if this is true, let me just save that and we'll just clean that up a little bit. So if this one is true, then what do we want to do? We actually want to remove out the enemy. So just as we did with the shots, we're going to do go up to the parent node. So we're going to traverse up to the parent mode and then remove child. And we already have that enemy within that object. And if we don't remove it, then what we can do is we can update the location. So let's try that out. So that's perfect. So they ran off and let's uh, go into our elements and inspect it and see what happened here. So we see we've got our play area, we've got our dashboard and we've got our container. So there's no enemies sitting in here. We've just got our box turret. So all of the starting content, we don't have our enemies. And that's the other thing too that we need to add in is we need to create a new one. And we already have a function in order to create one and position them. So we just need to add that function in. So now when they run off of the screen, you're gonna see that they're reappearing and they're getting randomized again. So they're not necessarily gonna be the same ones. There's new elements being created all the time as they run off the screen. So these ones are adjusting, moving around, and then when they go off of screen, then they just restart and do another random position for where they're located. So go ahead and add this part in, make the bad guys move around. And coming up next is going to be some of the interesting part because we're going to do collision detection. So that's going to be pretty neat. And for almost any game, you're going to need to have that. So that's coming up next.